Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to just kind of chat, and it's not going to be about makeup, I know most of my videos are, but today I just wanted to give y'all a little, like, brief synopsis of getting a master's, because I've gotten a lot of questions about it. Um, so if you don't know if this is like your first video or whatnot, I have a master's in marine biology, or technically it's marine sciences because we also have like sediment stuff, so it's marine sciences. I did my undergrad at the University of Florida and I got a degree in zoology, and then I went straight on to a master's degree in marine science, and now I'm getting a PhD in biological sciences in Bowling Green State University up in Ohio. So, just a brief synopsis, but um, I've got a lot of questions about how to do it, like what it was like, things like that. So I don't know, I'm just gonna chat. So I decided to get a master's. So I wanted to be a vet, that was the plan. And then I didn't get into vet school. And I was pretty devastated. I was 22 at the time, yeah. And I was like, my life's over. Just nothing to do anymore. Like I don't, like if I can't be a vet, I can't do anything. So I was, it was really hard. And I kind of had to like, Pick myself up by my bootstraps and well my mama my mama had to pick me up by my bootstraps if we're being honest um but you know kind of had to figure out what i was gonna do with my life and i've always loved the ocean i've always loved science so i was like well i'll get a master's in marine science and then i will um you know go to vet school that was the plan and so i wanted to be marine science because like i said i thought it was interesting because we know so little about the ocean and the animals in it. I like the biological part, so biology, you know, like the study of life. I like the animal side of it, um, but there's a lot of people that study the geochemistry, the way like the um, nutrients make move in and out of the water column. There's a lot of stuff, the sediments and like the history. So we have like paleoceanographers, there's a lot. I do the animal stuff just because that's what I'm the most interested in. But marine science is a huge, huge field and you could pretty much do anything you want in it. So I decided to do that and I wanted to go back to Georgia. So I'm from Georgia and then my, um, I did undergrad, like I said, in Florida. So I was like, I wanna go back to Georgia. And the only school in Georgia that offers a master's specifically in marine biology or marine science is Savannah State University. So I applied there. And I, they were like, cool, you're in, but you have to have an advisor. So if you don't know, in grad school you have an advisor and it's a lot different than an undergrad. You have, your advisor is the person that helps you design your experiment. They're the person that decides whether or not you can do that experiment because you have a proposal. Then you have your, uh, you do it, then you defend it. And they decide pretty much everything. Um, they're a big deal. I talk to my advisor still all the time. I talk to her almost every day while I was getting my master's. Um, so it's a big decision. And before you apply to a school, you really should know that there's somebody there doing work you want to do. And even if it's not, that they're willing to. So my advisor was working on grass shrimp and um, pollutants. So eco, it's called ecotoxicology, which is just like a fancy word for saying like how pollutants affect the animals and the ecology. So I was like, cool, you do shrimp ecotox. I wanna work on octopus. And we kind of came to this middle ground of sea stars because they were there. And so I was studying sea stars and regeneration and how that was affected by the increasing acidity um, decreasing pH, increasing acidity of the ocean. That was the plan. And as happens with science, things change. So um, we went out, we found my sea stars, the Stereos for BC, the Forbes sea stars, what I studied. And it was really interesting. And you know, we brought them back and they all died. And so we were like, crap. So there's not a lot of husbandry, which is just how you keep them in the, in the, like, the lab. There's not a lot of husbandry papers, especially about sea stars. Because sea stars, when you think about them, usually, and by the way, just to clarify, sea stars are the same thing as starfish, but they're not fish because they don't have a backbone, so sea stars is correct, just in case you were wondering. I get that question a lot. But, um, so like I was saying, there's not a lot of husbandry or how to keep them alive, so we didn't really know. And she had never worked on sea stars, I had never worked on sea stars. And most of the time when you see sea stars, they're like in a tank with a lot of other things. Well, we wanted to do what's called a monoculture or just like one species. So just a heck of a lot of sea stars. So it took a lot of time to figure out how to keep them alive, like almost a year. Then we finally figured it out. We were stable. We were great. And the sea stars disappeared. So after my year, we finally figured out how to keep them alive. I had to do what I call, which is called the proposal. So your thesis proposal is saying, this is my introduction. So this is like a literature search. What's out there? What's been done? here's what I want to do and my methods of how I want to do it. And you present that to your advisor and 
two committee members. So you have a committee of three. Um, one of my committee members worked at Savannah State. He was a, um, a professor there. And the other one was somebody that I found who studied bivalve. So he studied like mussels and stuff. And sea stars eat mussels. So that was why I chose him because like then you get the trophic interactions or like the whole ecological perspective. It makes sense, you know, because I wanted to study ecology. So I found him at Georgia Southern. I literally just Googled, hey, advice or like faculty of Georgia Southern because Georgia Southern is like 45 minutes away um, and it's really good if you can to have a, a committee member at least one that's outside of your university because it gives you broader scope and it also it means that you could have somebody that writes you a letter of recommendation that's not just from your university highly recommend it so I did my proposal uh, it'd been a year and I presented it to the three of them I had like a PowerPoint presentation it lasted like an hour um, and then we chatted, they asked me a bunch of questions about what I could do, a lot of like how I set it up. And then I had to go sit and wait for like 45 minutes and they decided whether or not I passed. So I did pass, um, you can fail. If you fail, that means you have to start it from scratch. Um, it doesn't happen very often at most schools, but I did, you know, like I said, I, I passed and they said ocean certification is not gonna happen. Like we don't have the time. So then I switched my experiment to husbandry. So my proposal was like 40 pages and I had to rewrite it in two weeks. Literally like pretty much highlight, delete the entire thing and rewrite it. I did it um, and I was continuing to sample. So going out on the boat and catching sea stars. And we decided we're just gonna do husbandry. We're gonna figure out the best way to keep them alive because nobody really knows. So that was cool. And then in July, so I've been there for almost exactly a year, sea stars disappeared. They were no longer found in Wausau Sound. At that same time, I lost my funding. So that sounds like I did something wrong. Um, if you don't know, most science is funded by the government. And you have a grant for so long, and then it's just gone. And I didn't have funding anymore. So I decided to be a TA. Well, I didn't decide. We had a couple of TA positions open, and I did that. So that waived my tuition. And it gave me a little bit of money to live on, but not very much. So I also had to get a couple of jobs just to pay my bills, eat, things like that. Um, which did put me behind. So instead of getting a master's in two years, I got it in three because I had uh, three jobs most of my master's. That's okay because you know you gotta make it work. You gotta figure out this is what I got. This is how I can make it work. Um, so I continued to do research. We never found them. We waited over a year and then we had to start over again. So then instead of looking at husbandry because we didn't catch them and you can't do husbandry without any specimens, um, we looked at the ecological impact of sea stars. So um, how important they are to the overall ecosystem. So we compared bycatch, which is what el everything else I caught from when sea stars were there and when they were not there. And then um, did a lot of statistical analyses and things like that and found out how important they are to the environment. So I was supposed to defend in October of 2017 and then I was told no. So that can happen. Uh, so I sent them what's called your penultimate draft, which is the last draft of your thesis before you defend. And one of my committee members said, I don't think you're ready. And that was it. I didn't get to defend. Now, you can argue with them and you can say, uh, I'm going to defend anyway. That's your option. However, you have to remember, those people are the ones who decide whether or not you pass. So um, my current advisor, his uh, advisor, when he was getting his PhD, told him no. And he was like, I'm doing it anyway. He obviously passed. So that's a risk you can take getting a master's. I didn't take that risk. I was like, all right, starting over again. It was devastating, but I did it. Um, not starting over again, but like working harder. And then I passed my defense. Then I defended in March. So when you defend, you do a public defense and you have a bunch of people there. Um, it's open to the public. So like all the faculty were there, my family was there, a bunch of people. And I literally sat there and gave them a PowerPoint presentation on everything I had done in the past three years. And then they could ask me any question they wanted. And some of the questions were really challenging. Um, but they, they can ask you anything you, they want. And then everyone leaves except for your committee and you sit there. And they ask you anything they want. And it's very nerve wracking because at the end of it, they send you out of the room again and similar to your proposal, you pass meaning congratulations, you have a master's degree. Pass with edits, which is most common, which means you're good, but we wanna change some of your document. My document ended up being like 120 pages. Um, or you fail, which means, nah girl, that's not good enough to get a master's, you can't do it. 
Again, failing is really uncommon, but it does happen. So even though like in your head, you're like, I'm not gonna fail. Like my advisor wouldn't let me defend if I was ready, I was gonna fail. Like, you know, if you kind of know you're not, it's still terrifying. So um, they sent me out of the room. I waited like 15 minutes and I passed. So getting it was really hard. At Savannah State specifically, we're very classroom based. So a lot of times for the imagine like at Bowling Green, you can take a lot of classes that are called like research, which just means, hey, I'm like gonna be writing my thesis or I'm gonna be like doing my research. And that counts for credit because you have to have 30 hours of class time to get a master's. At Savannah State, you get like three hours of research and the rest of it is actual like typical coursework. So there, it's very course heavy, um, which it, I like courses. I, I feel like it's how I learn. But a lot of people don't like it and they feel like it's a waste of time because like my crew at Bowling Green you don't have as many courses and it's like if you want to learn something read a book you're, you're getting a PhD you should be able to read a book and figure it out so that was something that was Savannah State specific um, I went to a lot of conferences so you go to conferences and that's where you get to give your work and it doesn't have to be published it doesn't have to be like all finished you're just like hey this is what I'm doing right now and so it's a really great way to stay like right on the cutting edge of science right on the cusp of your field and what's going on so I went to um, like seven or eight conferences in my three years and that's a you know it looks good on your resume because you put it on your resume you say hey this is what I've done but it also just you know it's a great way to stay engaged in science because as you probably know science is always changing and so since it's always changing, you have to know what's going on. And something that I still struggle with, if we're being honest, is you have to read a lot of literature. Um, so journal articles, peer-reviewed stuff, you have to read a lot of it. And something that's hard to come to grips with, and like I said, I still really haven't, is you're never gonna know everything. I hate it, because I say I'm a marine biologist, and people be like, oh, I caught this one fish one time and it was brown, what kind of fish is it? And I hate when people ask me stuff and I don't know the answer, especially if it's brain biology based, because I'm like, I, I didn't study that, I studied sea stars, you know? Um, so you, the farther along you get in academia, the more specific you know. Like I know a heck of a lot about sea stars, I know a decent amount about marine biology, and I know a fair bit of just general science. But you want to ask me some chemistry stuff, unless it's like ocean acidification, I probably don't know it. You know, and that's okay. But it's something that's hard to come to grips with. But you will get there. If you read, you will get to where you can be like, oh, this paper here, this year, this is what it says. And you'll bring it up in conversation. And like somebody told me that when I first started my master's, and I didn't believe them. So you will. As, and that is one thing I can say that I felt like, in my undergrad I didn't get enough of was reading science and finding your literature so if you're an undergrad and you're thinking about getting a master's especially in a science field start reading literature you'll never have enough you'll never know enough there will always be something else that someone asks you that you don't know the answer to so read that's the best way to do it read and comprehend of course you know um, and it takes a lot of time I am um, a little bit dyslexic and I'm a very slow reader not very severely dyslexic, just a little bit. So it takes me about two and a half hours to read a, a typical journal article, but I have to do it. So yeah, I don't know. I really loved my masters. It was by far the hardest thing I ever did. Um, I had a pretty easy time in high school. Undergrad, um, I didn't work as hard as I should have, and I did okay though. I mean, you know, I like passed all my classes and stuff, but I didn't really work that hard. My master's, I worked really hard every day. Every single day I was doing something science related. And it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but it was the best and it was the most rewarding. And being able to get out on a boat and trawl and figure out what's down there and being able to identify it. And um, right now we're working on publications. So if you don't know, there's this wonderful uh, phrase in science called publish or perish. And it's true. So I did all this work and I worked really hard on it. If I don't get it published in a scientific peer reviewed journal, it doesn't matter. No one will ever know about it because no one's ever gonna sit down and read my 120 page thesis. So I gotta publish it. And so we're working on that right now, but I'm also in a PhD. So I went straight from my master's to get a PhD. Um, and I'm really enjoying that as well. I don't know near as much about it cause I've been there for like two months, not even like a month and a half, but I don't know, that's kind of like a very brief synopsis of the last three years and how I got a master's. 
I would like to open it up if you have like questions, if anyone's interested in it, if you're like, hey, I think I want to get a master's, uh, tell me about Savannah State. Um, it's a really, really great marine biology program. Um, I had people a lot of times ask me about other classes. I don't know anything. I know our marine biology faculty is amazing. They really legitimately care about you. The, the campus is great. It's really beautiful. Um, but as far as like, oh, how is their physics department? Don't know anything. Never took undergrad classes there. Everything I took was in science and not just science, marine science. So anything I want to know um, about getting a master's or anything, it's hard, but it's really rewarding. Um, and if you don't, uh, I am the only one. So five of us graduated in May, and I'm the only one that's getting a PhD. A lot of people work end up working for the government, um, like for DNR and stuff, Department of Natural Resources. So you don't have, you know, just because you get a master doesn't mean you have to stay in academia if you don't want to. I want to be a professor, so I'm staying. But there you go. That's a brief synopsis of getting a master's. If you have any questions, please let me know because I'd love to talk to y'all about it. It's my passion. I love makeup, but science is my real passion. So I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll just see y'all soon. Bye.